It is not something we expected, but the way that Djokovic has played in recent times, it's not a surprise, is it? Djokovic being upset by the Chilean Alejandro Tobilo with a stunning performance in Rome. 6-3, 6-2. A major upset, a major win for the Chilean. And Djokovic's form is a big, big question mark at the moment. How will he go in Roland Garros? We'll see. Hopefully he can pick up the performance. But it's very concerning that he's not been able to truly play well in this tournament. He played somewhat decently in Monte Carlo. But only the two tournaments prior to Roland Garros. He's going to be a different player in Roland Garros. We all know that. But it is concerning. And a major upset to say the least. Djokovic was talking about whether or not that head injury, that head knock from which a couple of nights ago in which the bottle hit his head and did cause some bleeding, whether or not that did cause any problems tonight. And Djokovic was saying that we'll have to see. Training was different. He was kind of going for an easy training yesterday. He didn't feel anything, but he also didn't feel the same. Today under high stress, he said his coordination and balance were quite off and he'll have to see with his medical team or medical checkups to see what's going on. And it's not a good sign and hopefully he's not deflecting the blame from a poor performance but perhaps it did make a difference if he was bleeding if he was dizzy if he was nauseous that is quite concerning perhaps he shouldn't have even played but no one would have been against him pulling out if he really was affected by that head knock if that was the case it's quite a good excuse but i hope this excuse does not deflect away from Djokovic's poor performance and Tabilo's ability to really hold it all together and cause an upset so we'll see how that story develops but he's got a couple of weeks to recover and really have a nice training block going to Roland Garros two weeks away that's a long long time in in the tennis world and we'll see what happens the next couple of weeks going into Roland Garros he probably will be in Paris perhaps some 10 days from now but we'll see how it goes and Djokovic double faulting once again on match point he did this against Kasparud and Monte Carlo under very different scenario very different situation but he did it again and it's quite concerning perhaps just almost not caring and I don't like this from Djokovic almost being ignorant of all these other tournaments apart from the Grand Slams and perhaps the Olympic Games and ATP Finals if you want to add that in you are putting yourself at a massive disadvantage by not giving it your all or being mentally engaged in these sorts of matches it's very hard to flip that switch perhaps in Roland Garros he will have some struggles in the opening rounds of being able to really flip that switch all of a sudden because he's going to have to play well from the get-go all these players are great Tabilo is, in this case, one of the bottom seeds and will also be at Roland Garros. So on the clay courts, every player has to be feared. You have to win the matches. Very few cheap points. And today, Djokovic was the one that was giving cheap points away. Fair play to Tabilo because he held his nerve. And what can I say? The tennis letter saying here how Nadal and Djokovic both out of Rome before the second week. Of course, Rome has been now expanded to a 12-day tournament, I believe. And it hasn't even started, technically. It's only Sunday and historically Rome would have started the Monday two weeks before Roland Garros. Is he a near? Perhaps more so for Nadal. I'm still holding out hope for Djokovic winning a couple more Grand Slams, but I honestly believe we'll truly see an answer to this question at Roland Garros, and if not, perhaps for Djokovic at Wimbledon. We'll see. Tabilo talking about his <laughs> amazing win against Novak Djokovic in Rome. The interviewer saying, it's real. You've just beaten Djokovic on center court in Rome. Alejandro responding, it's incredible. I came on court just looking around and soaking it all in, trying to process everything. I'm just trying to wake up right now. And it's a great moment for the youngster. Or maybe not so youngster anymore, but he's an upcoming talent and he's one to look out for. The lefty has a very powerful game and I'll keep an eye out on him for the coming decade. And another story brewing here will translate this post. Yannick Sinner is set to be number one, probably regardless of whatever happens at Roland Garros. Even if Yannick were not to play Roland Garros, which he might not considering that injury problem, which although if he were to pull out, I would be very, very shocked. But regardless, Djokovic would need to reach the final of Roland Garros to be number one. And virtually, even if it doesn't happen after Roland Garros, after Wimbledon at the very latest, Yannick Sinner will be your new world number one. And he deserves it, albeit Djokovic has been a shell of himself in 2024 in general. And the other players, Alcaraz, Vedev, Medvedev, they haven't really been all too consistent. Sinner's been the most consistent, particularly on the hard courts. We'll see how he goes at Roland Garros given his own injury problems if he does play. But he deserves it. Well done to Yannick Sinner, and it's a matter of time. But the main story is, can Djokovic recover, play better tennis, and peak at Roland Garros after this devastating loss at the Italian Open in 2024? Let me know in the comments down below what do you guys think, and until next time.